Have you ever wondered why your 2019 to 2024 Camaro doesn't have a built-in garage door opener? I have, and personally, I don't really like carrying a garage door opener up on my visor. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to add a Homelink universal kit to it and easily wire it up so that you can ditch the garage door opener on your visor. Come with me and I'll show you what we need. Let's cover the unit and the tools that you're gonna to need to do the install. The Universal Garage Door Opener Kit is made by Johnson Controls and Gentex. There's a bunch of different names that this kit is sold under. However, the Homelink kit is all the same. The Universal pieces are all the same. They're made by uh, Gentex and Johnson Controls. So what comes in the kit is the actual control unit itself. This is what sends the commands, learns the programming. Then you have the universal opener button set. So we have the uh, black, it comes with beige, and it also comes with gray. And the reason it comes with these is it's a universal kit, so you could put it in different headliners, different uh, overhead consoles, etc. cetera. Uh, for the Camaro, everything is black, so I'm gonna use the black kit. Uh, it comes with the wiring harness, which is about six feet or so, and uh, it allows you to wire into existing wiring in the car. Uh, it needs ground, 12 volt, and there's an illumination wire. So the illumination wire is for the backlighting for the buttons. Uh, if you choose not to use the illumination, you don't have to. Um, you can wire it, tie it together, either leave it alone or tie it together with the 12 volt constant, but then it'll always be lit up. So um, my recommendation is finding an ignition wire for that. And then it also comes with some foam tape spacers. And the reason that this is important is because when this face plate grabs a hold of the uh, control unit on the back side, you can see that there's a bit of a gap. So these foam kits will be used depending on if you're putting this in a headliner or if you're using the overhead console to make sure that it's a tight fit. Here are the tools that you'll need to get the job done. You'll want a panel removal tool so that you can help pop open the side panel, remove the overhead console and tuck the wires in in the headliner and down the A-pillar. You'll want a pick tool to make sure that you can easily remove the harnesses that you need to get to. You will want to get a set of wire strippers. Uh, this will be used on both the Homelink harness and if you're using the Gen 5 DIY harness, you'll need to strip those wires as well. You'll want to make sure that you have some zip ties and some trimming cutters or side cutters to make sure that your wires are nicely tucked away and managed. Some masking tape for the overhead console itself and a precision cutting tool like an X-Acto knife or some kind of trimmer, a utility knife to help speed along the process to cut the Homelink button set into the overhead console or into your headliner. And then of course, if you're using the harness that comes with the Homelink kit, you'll want to use a self-tapping tool and a crush washer or a washer of some sort to make sure that you have a proper ground and if you are using the Gen 5 DIY harness, you'll want uh, three butt connectors and a crimping tool of some sort. Now that we're in the car, I'll show you where I plan on putting my universal door opener. There is a nice spot on the overhead console where this will fit. So I'll need my panel removal tool and a pick to get the harnesses off to remove this piece. I'll show you how easy that is. I'm gonna stay wide for the panel removal, and then I'll do a close up for the harness. What you wanna do is put your panel removal tool here in the corners uh, just above or, or right alongside the uh, LED lights. You'll hear a pop. 
move to the other side, do the same. And then from there, you can simply pull it down. The side closest to the windshield just has two plastic pieces that lift in. So there's no need for a panel removal tool back there. There are two harnesses that connect real close. So I'll use my trusty pick tool to get those disconnected. And I'll show you that close up now. Now that we have this popped down, uh, I'm gonna start by removing the harnesses here. So to get these two initial harnesses off, you can actually either put your pick tool in here and get this side, the, the driver's side is pretty easy to get to. However, the passenger side, that tab is on the back and it's not easy to get to. However, this entire plastic piece will pop off. You just put a little pressure on one of the little uh, plastic pieces that holds that chipset in and actually pop the entire unit out. Now, careful there, that's where the button is and where some of the circuitry is. So you just wanna be careful. You're just gonna turn it over. And make sure to clip that back into place. And then for the middle harness here, it's uh, the pin is located on the passenger side of the vehicle. So you wanna bring your pick tool in passenger side, pull that out. That should give you a little more flexibility to get to the two harnesses at the back. Allow you to pull this down a little further. There is a retention, a red retention piece on the one harness on the driver's side. So you'll pull that out and then you can get that harness out. And you have one harness left over here that is similar to the other three that were up front. The pin is on the side closest to the windshield, so it's not easy to get to. You can get to it with a little bit of patience. And then you can remove the overhead console so that you can install the opener system in this area here. Now, if you have a sunroof, this isn't really an option because your sunroof control is here. So if you do have a sunroof, my recommendation here is to still pull this down so that you have a way to route wiring through but you can then install your garage door opener either in the headliner here, right ahead of your uh, overhead console or under the driver's side or onto the passenger side if you don't want something over here. Uh, and that will allow us to get rid of this ugly thing. We've got the overhead console out of the car and now it's time to mark up and mock up where we're gonna install it. So with the universal piece here, uh, you can almost see it's kind of shaped pretty similarly overall to the size of the overhead console or the shape of the overhead console. And it just happens to be a perfect little spot right there that I'm gonna shoot for. Now, this does require not only cutting a hole here, but also trimming some of the backside of the overhead console. And that's because we need the control module itself to fit and connect inside here as well. So we need to trim away some of this. This won't affect the integrity, the structural integrity of the overhead console. It'll still reconnect to the headliner without any issue. And uh, it'll give us the added benefit of having the Homelink controller built right into the overhead console. As I mentioned before, the kit comes with some foam tape and that's to uh, fill in the gap on the backside to make sure there's a tight fit. However, you can actually use this as a template for your cutting location since this is exactly where we need to cut. Now, I'm gonna use the in interior portion of that. Uh, I'm gonna place it where we need it to uh, I'm going to trace it and then cut it. But before I'm tracing or cutting anything on the overhead console, I'm going to use some masking tape. This will do two things. One, it'll give me a better idea of where I need to cut. And then two, um, any frayed pieces of plastic will kind of be contained within the masking tape area. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that by simply starting with the cutout. Once I have the cutout traced, I'm going to score that with a sharp utility knife first uh, before I start doing any kind of cutting, uh, just to make sure that that is in the right spot. Again, make sure it's lined up where you want it. Uh, it doesn't. This part doesn't have to be perfectly level or square yet because there is a little bit of play that you'll be able to adjust this with um, before you connect it on the back side. And then we'll flip over and I'll show you where I trim the pieces back here. There you have it. We've got the template cut out on the front. Now I just want to make sure that uh, I clear enough space back here. Uh, I'm not gonna bother taping this backside up. You're never going to see it. It's not a finished trim piece. Essentially what I'm going to do is cut this section right here away, following the, the infrastructure that this is kind of built on uh, as it is. So I'm gonna cut that and then get to installing the garage door opener kit on the overhead console. Okay, here is the front side opened up. I'm just doing a quick test fit for the opener. And it looks like uh, there's a little bit of play left and right. Like I said, it'll help me kind of straighten it out if I need to. But that will be what your finished product looks like from the front, giving you three garage door button controls right in the overhead console. Now that we've got the back of the unit cut as well, and you can see that I opened it up quite a bit here, uh, you'll see a little um, clip connector that sits right here. You do have to take this out because that's where the harness comes out of for the module, for the control module right here. So this will sit in like that and connect to the button face plate. So I'm gonna put that in here now, push that in. And then again, to make sure that stays tight, there's a foam tape gasket that goes in between. We'll get that in there now. I went ahead and put two foam gaskets on here just to make up that, that larger gap. Now that the front piece is on, what I recommend doing is routing the connection that plugs into the control module through the headliner first, making that connection in the car, and then snapping it onto the piece. Uh, this will allow you to get the wire harness into position where you need it to without having to run the bulk of the wiring through the headliner. Now that we're back in the car, we have the button module installed into our overhead console. What I'm going to do is take the wiring harness that came with it, and I'm going to feed the control module end through the headliner from the windshield side into this space here where the other harnesses are coming. This will allow me to make it easier to install instead of wrestling with the wire bundle from the mirror side, I'll install it from windshield side. So just getting my fingers down here, just putting a little bit of pressure there. We'll be able to feed and see that wire harness pop through. Once it does, grab a hold of it and route it to the appropriate side couple of different, or there's some other harnesses in here that you know, will get in the way. So I want to make sure we're routing it appropriately and feeding it over to the side where the buttons are, which is on the driver's side. Giving myself a little extra slack here, let that hang down. And then once it is in this 
area here. I'm going to make the connection to the control module. And uh, the reason I'm doing that here is because it'll be a little difficult to plug in once it's installed into the module. Uh, I'm sorry, into the overhead console. So I've got that plugged in. I'm going to line up the three clip spaces with the button module here and get it going. You'll hear it snap into place. And now I can start reinstalling the harnesses into the overhead console and start reassembling things to, to plug it back together. We'll go ahead and get these harnesses installed. Let's see, there we go. Got that one in. Get the other harness in here. Clip that in, push that retaining clip back in. And now we can move on to the forward harnesses. Middle one and our LED modules or LED lights, app lights, reading lights, whatever you want to call them. That one in, plug that one in. <clears throat> Push your overhead console back into the car. Next, we'll move on to routing the harness. Now that we have the harness plugged into the button module, I'm gonna go ahead and run this wire harness uh, down the headliner and down the A-pillar and then I'll show you uh, how to pop this side panel off so you can get it to the location underneath the footwell of the passenger side where we'll make our final wire connections. Using either a trim tool or just your fingers, you can feed this into the wire harness, uh, the headliner, excuse me. And then once you've made it over to the A pillar, you can feed it into the A-pillar, use a trim panel tool to shove it in between the A-pillar and the headliner section. And then once you make it over to the rubber seal, you can just pull the rubber seal back with your hands and finish routing that down to the dashboard area. And I'm just making sure this is tucked in so it doesn't make this rubber seal fit strangely so it's just inside the a pillar itself and now that we've got it near the dash we can pop this side panel off by simply opening the glove box and then getting our fingers in between the glove box and the panel itself and simply pushing out towards the door. Now, the first time you do this, it's gonna be really difficult. So I recommend a panel tool. Uh, if you've done this several times, it'll pop right off. So just a few push clips that hold it in place. Uh, all you need to do is just push it out towards the door, as I mentioned, set that down out of the way. And then you have access to route the wire down into the passenger side floorboard where we'll make our connection to the brown HVAC connector that's underneath the kick plate down there. Now that we have the wire routed in from the side of passenger side door panel that we popped off just a few seconds ago, the HVAC control module is on the passenger side uh, on the actual kick panel up here that's uh, just below the dashboard and we actually want to get to the brown HVAC connector here so that we can wire the ground, the illumination, and the 12 volt wire into that part of the vehicle. Now I'm going to stop my install here because I'm not going to tap into that connector because I've been working with Gen 5 DIY for a harness that will allow me to tap into those without touching the factory wiring. But what I'll do for anyone else who doesn't want the harness and they just want to tap into those, I'll go ahead and put up a wire connector diagram right now. 
For those that want to tap into the factory harness, pin one on that brown connector is red with a violet stripe, and that is for the 12 volt connection. Then on your ground, you can either drill into the body panel, drill into the metal behind the kick panel somewhere, and that will uh, give you ground, or you can tap into pin eight, which is the black wire, the solid black wire in that harness. And then for the illumination wire, you can connect to pin nine, which is an ignition wire, which is violet with a gray stripe. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm using the harness from Gen 5 DIY, and I showed it to you earlier, but what I'm gonna do using this harness is disconnect the brown connector here, plug it in to this side of the Gen 5 DIY harness, plug this end back into the control module, and then I'm going to route their wiring up to that side panel and using butt connectors, connect these three wires together. Now that you have the harness wired up down under the passenger side uh, kick plate, make sure to tie up the wire harness here to an existing wire, just so that you're not uh, having to worry about whether this wire gets loose or caught up in anything. And, you know, always remember, trim your zip ties. Once you have that done, you can take the side panel, line it up, it tucks in behind the rubber door gasket, and then just simply pop it on. Now that everything is installed and wired up, it's as simple as programming the unit. Programming is really easy. You take your original garage door opener, hold it within an inch or two of the home link unit, and then push the button that you want to program simultaneously with the button on your garage door opener and hold until the light starts blinking rapidly. and then let go. You'll see the light on the home link unit start to blink. And then once it has finished blinking, push the button again. Your garage door opener will confirm. And then you push the learn button on your garage door opener within 60 seconds. Once you've pushed the learn button on your garage door opener, push that button again, and you'll see your garage door is now programmed. Now that you have your garage door or multiple doors programmed, it's just as simple as pushing the button and you'll see your garage doors open. So there you have it. Another install done easy. Thanks for watching. I hope that this helps you get your 2019 to 2024 Camaro set up with a home link kit. I'll have everything in the description below on where to get the links. Uh, using those links helps out the channel. Also like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, about 82% of my views are not subscribers and it doesn't hurt to subscribe and it sure helps out the channel so I can keep bringing content like this. That's it for today. I'll see you on the next video.